start again. <clears throat> Recording in progress. Chris Black, thank you so much for for doing this. How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. I'm doing I'm doing great. Enjoying this Thursday. Uh, how are you? I'm I'm good. I'm also enjoying this Thursday. It's it's a pleasantly sunny day here in Austin, and um, it's been like raining and thundering like cats and dogs the last couple Oof. of days. So it's nice. It's nice to have a little bit of sunshine. I love it. I love it, man. <laughs> anyway, so Chris is a, a front end developer. And the purpose of this little talk is just so recruiters and sourcers like myself can just be a little bit more educated about what you guys do, who you are, so we don't sound like total dorks on the phone. It's part of the job to not really know what you're talking about when you're talking to smart people and trying to convince them to take a job, but or at least speak with any degree of authority. So hopefully this video will help uh, clarify some of that. Um, cool. So uh, Chris, why don't you why don't we start with uh, what your job title is, uh, where you're working, and how you became a front end developer? I just gave away your job title, but how you got to where you are. <laughs> I'll 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 ask. For risk that and uh, answer it how I would answer it. Uh, so yeah, as you introduced Christop Christopher Black, um, title is senior software engineer. Ooh. So you know, there may be some nuances there. Uh, <laughs> you will address yeah, me as senior, sir. <laughs> you will. <laughs> <laughs> I work for that one. I work for that one. Uh, yeah. Good. And um, I've been in engineering for you know, going on seven years. And prior to my work in uh, engineering development, I was working as a web dev web designer. So I was, you know, creating assets, doing UX, UI, also for web. So it was a natural transition. Okay. So, and for the recruiters and sources out there just getting into this, web designing is kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Chris, but that's kind of uh it's not really so much dynamic coding. It's more just kind of figuring out the look and feel of a website. And your natural progression was going from doing that graphic design, doing that web design to actually making it dynamic and getting into coding. Is that correct? That is exactly correct. Yes. Okay. Very cool. So, um, and you said you've been doing this for five years? Uh, engineering for seven, design for three. Okay, cool. Um, background as a designer got into coding and that was a natural progression for you. Um, I'm curious, you know, when you think about yourself as a junior front end developer versus now a senior software engineer, what is, what is, uh, what are the big differences in, in, on, I guess you could say in a typical day, like what were you doing back then and what do you do now? Sure. Um, back then a lot of it was learning on the job. Um, you know, uh, working with team leaders and, uh, getting good at receiving direction and receiving information. Uh, at the time, admittedly, I wasn't much of a Git pro. So a lot of basics were still needed to be taught to me. Uh, and with each new job, you have to adapt to their workflow. So uh, a bit of a junior developer's process is learning best practices of the company that you're working for. And more than anything else, learning how to learn and adapting to the team that you're a part of. Okay, fantastic. And now, and how would you juxtapose that between what you're doing now? Truthfully, I mean, at the, at the start of a new job, I'm about two weeks into mine, and it's a lot of the same, but faster. You know, it's, uh, it's adapting to the team that you're working with. It is learning the workflows, uh, learning all of the tools necessary that uh, you and the team are currently using, and um, essentially learning and how you can contribute, step in, and make meaningful changes at a much faster rate than someone just getting into the industry might. Okay, gotcha. Um, a couple more questions coming at you here. Just in a broad sense, I would say bird's eye view to... Where do you go from a bird's eye? Like a... Like a rodent? Micro to macro? Or yeah, zoomed in? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, squirrel's eye view. Um I feel like that would be like very low, like kind of looking upward. Um, uh, what does a front end developer do? Just for, if you had, if you had to explain it to a recruiter so they could kind of basically get the idea and vibe before they start the search or start talking to you folks, sure. how, how can they understand it? A front end developer will take designs created by a designer, will use those designs to build out a web architecture and a front-end experience to match those designs and take into account a user's experience um, 
as well as things like accessibility, um, obvious functionality, uh, usability. Uh, so essentially, they take something visual and they make it interactive. Okay, perfect. For the web. And you and you're a senior software engineer right now. What would you say the difference between a senior software engineer and a front end developer or a senior front end developer is? Uh, well, when I had the front end developer title, uh, I was primarily and solely responsible for um, essentially building out template code. You know, I, I was building out HTML, CSS uh, with JavaScript uh, to solely create a front end experience. And uh, with my current responsibilities, I am responsible for handling more than just the front end, uh, interacting with the back end, um, interacting with infrastructure, uh, being responsible for working with teams and leading teams, uh, interacting with product managers, with designers, um, building out specs, uh, defining what is a good use of time for both myself and my team and what will deliver a good return on investment. So I would say it's it's a lot of the similar things, but to a more advanced degree. Like a broader scope, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. That makes sense. Um, so coming from your background, doing what you do, say a recruiter reaches out to you. I think that you reached out by a recruiter to get your current job, correct? Yes. Why? And you probably get in mails all the time, I assume. Like, decent amount. <laughs> like maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? Knocking on wood right now. Yeah, I know, right? Um, what stuck out to you about this recruiter's email? And in your opinion, what separates a good recruitment reach out to a kind of subpar one? What caught your attention? I guess. This individual was direct. Uh, was kind and warm wasn't super cheesy, um, reached out a second time without putting a lot of pressure on me. Uh, and truthfully, a big part of it was the name recognition. And I, I, I've spent a lot of my life understanding what Visco was and uh, being interested in it. So when, you know, he led with that, there was an instant connection. And uh, after my initial interest was there, the casualness and the uh, kindness of which you were speaking with me without being too much, uh, mm -hmm. I found relaxing and I wanted to continue the conversation. Okay. So there, it sounds like it really was that the recruiter was a pretty instrumental piece in you moving forward in the process and ultimately getting to the finish line. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Very cool. Um, what excites front end developers? I think the opportunity for growth, uh, the opportunity for leadership, and the opportunity to build things that will be seen and used by a wide audience, and the opportunity to build things that are cool. Okay. You know, front end development is inherently visual. So, you know, if you're in this role, you want to make things look and feel good. And to be given the opportunity to do that in high profile cases is desirable. Okay, gotcha. So, and that is, that was some of the appeal of Visco, right? Is that it was reaching a large user base. So a lot of what you would do is not only going to be seen by a lot of people, but used by a lot of people. Is that fair? That is fair. And unique to me in this situation was the opportunity to, uh, maybe dip my feet into WebGL and other type of graphics-based activities, which is where my personal interests lie. Okay. Now, when you think of front-end developers and say somebody, say a recruiter is speaking to one, how can they kind of get a feel for where they're at in their competence? Like, what should they just kind of be aware of? Like, what makes a good front-end developer <laughs> different from maybe like a, I don't know, someone that is, I don't know what the nice way to say this is, but it's just not, you know, making the cut or maybe couldn't do what you do at your job. Sure. Um, I would say communication is a, a pretty, and I, I don't mean to like lead with soft skills, but um, more so I find over time that the soft skills are pretty valuable because unless you're working on a team of three, 
you do have to interface with a lot of people and mm. uh, the quality at which you're able to communicate your needs, your interests, uh, challenging discussions is really valuable when you work with a team. So if you're seeing someone that uh, seems unable to have a conversation with you, unwilling to have a conversation with you, impatient about that conversation, I would say those are some red flags. And when it comes to more hard skills, uh, I would say, you know, ask, you know, uh, medium to advanced level topics uh, with whatever tool and or framework was relevant to that job uh, and see how that individual responds, whether or not it's the correct answer, uh, how they communicate, communicate the fact they might not have the right answer is, um, in my experience, a really great sign about how they approach developing their skill set, as well as how they share the skills that they currently have. That Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that there's like a common kind of, I don't want to say gripe, but concern that developers have that's like, okay, well, you know, companies want me to do all these tech stuff and memorize some Fibonacci, whatever. But like when I actually get to my job, 95% of it is just like Googling and remembering how to do certain things. So I can totally see how, you know, if you know that when you get to the job, that that's going to be a part of what you're doing anyways, but the rest of your skills aren't super collaborative or your soft skills are kind of lame. That's, that's not going to be a, a good fill. So, um, so yeah, awesome. That's great. Um, I have one more final question for you and thank you so much for this. Um, I think this is going to help a lot of people, uh, that are doing their recruitment thing. Um, the last one would be, what are some important things that recruiters and sourcers should be aware of when speaking to front-end developers? And my dog, I think is suffocating. Hold on. You all right? You're all right. Okay. Uh, I think it's important to communicate what value that that position offers for them. Uh, everyone wants to improve their skill set and grow as individuals. And in many of these cases, grow with the company that they're a part of. And for me, at least personally, I want to know that the team is excited to have me and that within that team, there's opportunity for me to develop my professional skill set and also just who I am as a person. Okay, cool, man. Well, I assume that this was your lunch break. So thank you for talking to me on your lunch break. I'll let you get back to your front end develop senior software engineering. I apologize at Visco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome super thank different you. things They're yeah. Super different. <laughs> yeah exactly all right chris thank you so much for the time man of course nice to talk to you see you